Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lions Challenge Runs in the Binding of Isaac. This is a very simple run, uh, and the impetus for this, and I'll explain the impetus before I actually explain what's happening. I totally forgot to give myself infinite item power, but I can do that. This is uh, a run that I'm doing because I'm cooking chili. It's it snowed in Vancouver. Uh, I'm just giving myself infinite item power right now. That's cheats, open cheats window, infinite item power, good. Um, I'm, I'm making chili right now, and I'm making chili because it's, you know, a nice winter food to eat, early spring. It's a good food to eat uh, all the time. I shouldn't be using tears on this run, but uh, it's also snowed for three days in a row in Vancouver. And last year in Vancouver, I think it snowed three days the entire year. It's, you know, pretty abnormal compared to the rest of Canada. It doesn't snow very often at all. Uh, and, you know, let's figure if it's going to be wintry here, why don't I have a little bit of a wintry food for myself as well. And so this is, a. Uh, a run that I think I did last year and I called it like too many chili dogs or something like that. But I don't know, we might call this the chili, I don't know what we're gonna call this. But the, the trick for this run is that we have black bean, we have the bean, and we have infinite item power, but we can't use our tears. So I've made a, a horrible mistake using my tears earlier on, but that won't make a big deal. Now, there are some exceptions, we will use our tears in situations where... That was so bad of me. Uh, we'll use our tears in situations where we can't access an enemy by using uh, what is basically a really short range area of effect melee attack. Uh, for example, if there's like an enemy on the other side of the room and it's just impossible for me to get to them, then that should work. That should be something we'll take. We'll take Holy Water as well, even though it's bad. At least it's not, you know, Holy Water is actually better than Polyphemus in this case. Please don't take that out of context. The Binding of Isaac subreddit will never let me forget it. Um, but yeah, that, that's it, and maybe we'll allow ourselves to shoot poop and fires as well. Although I don't know if you can just, uh, you know, use the the bean and fart on them instead. So it's a run that is weird. It's, it's a very weird run for me to be describing because it's simultaneously like really easy. Like the bean does a lot of damage and the poison damage, you know, it, it's adds up over time for sure. Um, but also it's an exceptionally difficult run because we have to get very, very close to enemies to actually make this work. And uh, I think there is the ability to stack it up multiple times and, and make that happen. But uh, you gotta be pretty close to the enemies to make that happen as well. So it's a bit of a, uh, a, a tough one, but if we get HP, I think we'll be in a good position. So I have no idea how this is going to end, but it could be fun. Uh, so I'm choosing to do it anyway. And of course, the other thing is that uh, I can't take any other spacebar items. It's the other part of the challenge here, because otherwise I'd lose like all the value in having uh, the, the run itself, wouldn't I? I'm hoping our boss room is up here, because I really would prefer... The poison damage will kill them. Uh, I would prefer to not have to backtrack that much. This is one of those runs where every single room that we go to does raise the chances that we're going to take a decent amount of damage, but this does appear to be a dead end here, and that chili is smelling good. All right, shot tears, I'm sorry. It's actually very difficult to get used to it. I might as well just take my other hand off the keyboard, I guess. I'll start uh, jerking it over here. Um, and I was making the Twitter, and I was talking about the, the... Or I was making the chili, and I was talking about the chili on Twitter. And I was like, well, I made the chili with beans. And then a lot of people got on my case. They say, Northern Lion, you don't make chili with beans. I've always made chili with beans. I, I've experimented with many recipes back when I was in university, because it was a great option for like a, a healthy, cheap, and delicious meal that you can make in like one big batch on a Sunday and then eat it for dinner for like four days in a row. And that's okay because you're in college and at least you're not just microwaving Hot Pockets or something, at least that's what my mom told me. Um, so yeah, I ate a lot of chili and I always put beans in. You know, people consider it to be a filler. I disagree with that. I think the beans are not the focus. Obviously, you know, the, the meat, if you have meat in it and the tomatoes are the focus of a chili. This is a risky uh, one for me here. And the spice, of course, is important in a chili as well, if you're the kind of person that's into that sort of thing. Uh, but the beans are they are very nutritious, and uh, they fill it up, but they're not filler. It's not like, you know, being someone with an eating disorder and, like, eating newspaper to make sure that your stomach feels full. It's just, it adds a nice little, like, vegetarian meat to the chili. I think it adds a nice consistency, maybe, is what I'm trying to go with here. Um... Weirdly enough, Pin is probably... I was gonna say he's actually a little harder than normal. That turned out to be completely false after I stood next to him for like 10 seconds. Uh, Blighted Ovum shouldn't be too bad. Obviously, the speed thing is a real concern. Um, but if I just stay like in the right area here, I should be okay. And if we could get uh, two HP upgrades on this floor, I would be so happy. And meat is not really that much more helpful relative to other HP upgrades, but that's fine. Also, it should go without saying that um, if I leave for a second, it's because I'm trying to make sure my house doesn't burn down. It's irresponsible to be, you know, doing other things while food is cooking on a hot stove. I wouldn't recommend that you do it yourself. Uh, but the reason I am doing it is because, uh, you know, it's uh, on, like, difficulty. Not difficulty, but on, um, you know, heat level, like, one. So don't get all bent out of shape over it. I, I understand fire safety. To some extent, at least. So, obviously, we're in a really bad situation here. I don't want to get too close to these guys, so I'm actually just going to put down a bomb. 
And I think bombs are there on the level, man. Those should be allowed. And then I'm just going to stay as far away from this guy as I actually can. And he may die to poison damage. He didn't. Just Yeah, thank God he did not shoot. Oh my God, just give me some red hearts. I'm actually kind of scared right now. If we die, we'll just start redoing the run. And we'll do the run. Uh, maybe I could make it easier on myself by like doing it as Maggie. Ooh, that was I almost walked right into that. Uh, I could make it easier on myself by doing it as Maggie. Or I could give myself lard, which is I think the way that I handled it last time. Uh, when I did this, but I also think that that made things far too easy when I did it. So, I'm not sure, but there's a spirit heart here, so crisis, you know, or all is not lost right now. Uh, I'm trying to think what else, we could give ourselves a full suite of orbitals, that might make it a little too easy though, because a lot of these enemies will uh, then not take damage, oh god, uh, will then uh, not be able to damage me at all, basically, because they'll just hit the orbitals, or they'll be at least uh, a lot less likely to be able to damage me. So if we just poison them uh, a little bit here, we should be good. Um, probably two poisons is roughly what we're gonna need. We've been to our item room, it was spider butt, that's really bad. So I guess we're actually done with this floor. I might look for the secret room after we beat the boss, if we beat the boss. This is actually maybe not an ideal boss, but a pretty easy boss considering what we're working with here. I gotta work on my, my skills of uh, mashing the spacebar button as much as possible. You know, the eight ball is not a great item for us, but the tarot card that we get is the hermit. It's not very good, uh, but it could have been good if we had gotten like a full health card or a, a sun card or a lover's card or something like that. Uh, as of right now, this floor has not really improved my chances too much. That's okay though. You know, if we get enough money to go to the shop and get something useful, I'll probably just... Never mind, the secret room is not there, so we're actually just gonna leave this floor and maybe we'll find the secret room on the next floor and we'll use our hermit card there, because obviously right now. Um, I could use it, but I don't have enough money, so better to save it for a chance uh, where we might be able to make better use of it, if you know what I mean. My serious nemesis right here are these enemies that walk into you, like that one that you saw right there, or enemies that explode into other enemies. Fly love would be actually a really nice item to have in conjunction with um, a run like this. Cool, be cool. One poisoning is enough, so I should just stay away from those guys. I really wish that we also had more HP dropping, but that appears to not be uh, in the cards for us, so that sucks. But that's okay. I'm starting to get uh, a little bit, a little bit acclimated, I think, to this run. You know what would be amazing? Yep, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, what would be amazing is if we were able to get the blood bag, because that speed would be very important, uh, and the HP would be super important as well. But the speed would allow me to dodge offensively a little bit better as well. Come on, give me some freaking red hearts, man. Like, this is going to be... A really tall order if I get zero health. This is a, an incredibly scary room for what I think are obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's actually really good that that happened that way. Now we just need to kind of dodge uh, on this horizontal axis here and make sure that we're far enough away from the enemy when uh, he explodes. We actually got a red heart there, which feels pretty good. A little bit more money and we can justify going to the shop or using our hermit card to go to the shop and saving a key, maybe? Or. I mean, if, I guess if we are going to do it the best way, we would like go into a curse room and then use the Hermit card, but we'll see if that is uh, a possible thing that we can actually do. For now, we're starting to come up a little bit, I think. The Hermit card is very unlikely to be, you know, worth what we paid for it. We didn't really pay anything for it, but worth what we, uh, what we could have gotten instead, if that makes sense. It's not really the right way, I think, in Isaac to evaluate your chances. Um, but it's hard to break out of that mindset that like, oh, we should have had an HP upgrade, but instead we got this. Well, I don't know if that's really how probability works, but sure. More keys is always great. Don't uh, don't get me wrong there. The really problematic thing about our run right now is that we're seriously only like one room away uh, from being dead. At any given time, even if we had nearly full health, or at least more health than we have right now, um, it only takes one truly terrible room to really ruin your chances on a run like this because... Uh, you know, if you start dealing with, like, massive infamy or something like that, which we are probably likely to do at some point, it's going to be difficult for us to do uh, damage without getting hit. It's not like we have piercing shots or something like that. This is an example of a time when I almost think I have to use uh, my tears, but actually the flies are going to move over in this general direction, thankfully. Hey, the magnet is actually, you know, due to the shaking up that we've done of our priorities here, the magnet is actually weirdly one of the more useful items for us. Saves us a bomb in a situation like that. Still gonna look for the secret room. This is another situation where, well, it didn't actually save us a bomb that time, but we got some extra bombs. Actually, you know what? It, no, it didn't save us a bomb because there was a, a live bomb. All right, this is a really bad room uh, for obvious reasons. It's okay though, as long as we don't encounter too many more of those, that should be fine. Just dodge. This is the most important thing for this room. Oh, they're not gonna pop up because they're poisoned. Okay, just hang out, wait for the poison to dissipate. 
Then come back in. There we go. So they're going to take two hits each. And that's uh, it's a little annoying, but uh, should still be able to do it regardless. This guy's still going to pop up, right? Yeah, so we'll poison him now. And that will give us a second to stay away from this turret until the poison damage wears off there. Unless he got poisoned as well when we went in there. I don't know why he's not popping up. That one didn't do anything at all. Actually, he still got hit by poison damage somehow, even though he didn't look poisoned. Whatever. Uh, okay, boss here is going to be Fistula. This is a difficult boss to fight with these kind of shifted priorities. It's okay. We'll just kind of keep the... Oh, that's bad. Keep the pressure on. I don't know if uh, Holy Water actually does damage to Fistula parts when they fly over them. Holy Water is weird like that in that sometimes I think it does do damage to flying enemies, but that doesn't make it very much better, but it is a weird uh, kind of silver lining that you might not expect from one of the worst items in the game. Deals with the Angel would be so helpful. Almost all of them, actually, at this point. The Spirit of the Night, weirdly enough, would be one of the worst. That thing should be killed. Uh, excellent. Jesus Juice. That's actually terrible for us. <laughs> I wish I wish I could be more positive. At least we got a, you know, one red heart for that fight. And I only took half a heart of damage, so that's a, a slight positive. That was a, a really good poisoning there, followed by a really bad bit of uh, taken damage. But we have ten bombs, which should allow us to very easily, thank you, uh, very easily go to our shop and buy something. Even if it's just more red hearts, that keeps us alive a little bit longer. That's, that's pretty important. Uh, compass and map are also basically ideal, but that's not any news. Uh, that's something that's always, uh, the priority list has basically always been there. Book of Revelations... We can't buy. We, we Even if we have the money, we have to keep the beans. So, blue candle falls in the same boat. Seriously? You know what? Let's use our hermit card now. Mom's purse is on sale. And we've got... Uh, yeah, we'll get Mom's purse. Samson's lock is useless for us. But it, it would be nice to possibly have two trinkets. Who knows? Maybe one of those trinkets is Maggie's faith or something. I don't even know where our other, our other uh, secret room could be. Or, like, our main secret room could be. What a weird run. Uh, they've been impossible to find so far. Truth be told, I've actually lived uh, a little bit longer than I thought I would based on how this run started. Harlequin Baby is unfortunately completely useless for us. Um, one thing you could also do to make this run a little bit more plausible is maybe say like, okay, and you can do this via spider mod even without the D6. Uh, it's just a button press or a hotkey. Uh, you can say, okay, when you walk into a room, you get one reroll if it's not an item that you can actually use. So we could reroll Harlequin Baby, and, you know, it's it takes away a little bit of the purity, but it also makes it uh, substantially more likely that you're going to get some items, because it's a very limited item pool that actually supports you if you're not going to be shooting tears. There are some. The ability to fly is uh, maybe chief amongst them right now. We don't really have to worry about our damage. Our damage is good, actually. Um, not, not our tier damage. I have no idea how that's doing, but... Uh, our damage overall is, is pretty good with the, the pooping that we're doing, or the, the farting that we're doing anyway. Uh, we just don't really need uh, anything to augment it. Speed upgrades actually become, I, I think, in my estimation at least, a little bit more valuable in a, in a run like this. And we're just going to focus on uh, poisoning as much as possible, which is like it seems fairly obvious, I guess. Took a lot of damage there that I'm not happy about, but we got uh, enough to compensate us back, I think. Alright, this is a shitty room, and... Uh, you know, pun half intended there, but basically we want to make sure that the body parts die uh, or get separated as soon as possible because then they can't hit me through walls anymore, which makes my life a little bit easier. If we end up winning on this run, I'm going to be thrilled, but we really need more HP and possibly something like the Relic or the Mitre. Child's Heart. Little Chad actually is weirdly enough probably pretty useful for us here. Uh, Bum Friend would be up there. Anything that can give us red hearts on the regular. And you can see, like, those items... This is why I like challenge runs. Those items are very far outside of my traditional comfort zone when it comes to uh, items that I would consider saying are very important. Uh, you know, we've, we've had a few possible locations for the secret room. I'm a little wary about uh, going to it, but we'll see. I'm a little bit wary about trying to go to it because I've wasted so many bombs so far. It's all right, though. We'll, we'll clear out the rest of the floor and then see how things look. This is, weirdly enough, uh, one of the best rooms for us, I think. Almost took damage on it anyway, but as long as we can kind of keep an eye on where those enemies are about to shoot, it's uh, a lot easier for me relative to some other rooms. Uh, it, in fact, it might even be easier on a run like this than it would be on a vanilla run. Now, I don't want to get too greedy with those bomb flies. I think that was a pretty smart play. There's another example of the magnet actually being kind of useful. This is a, a little bit of a scary room because we did take damage against these guys earlier. But if they go down to the ooze state when they're poisoned, they should die in the poison state. Or they should die during that. Now, pills could be good for us. Bad gas is just kind of... I don't know. It's not ironic because everyone always gets mad at you when you use like the Alanis Morris at definition of ironic. Even though, you know, language is a fickle beast. It's constantly changing. Um, 
It's okay, though. Depths part one. Just, uh, you know, a cube of meat would be amazing here, but otherwise I just want HP upgrade. Eh, uh, Gish is useless. <laughs> By the second, I was like, okay, Gish is, uh, it's pretty good. You know, it'll slow enemies and that makes us better. Uh, but actually, it's useless because Gish only fires when we fire. That was, you know, just walk right into the bomb. Smart play. Um, and also, Gish is being a real pain in the buttocks when it comes to uh, doing damage and, and getting hurt because she, sorry, he, I always mess that up. I think it's, I've got a preconceived notion that Gish sounds like a feminine name, I guess, because I make that mistake all the time. Apologies to anybody out there named Gish. It sounds like you have pretty cool parents uh, or who really like either the Smashing Pumpkins or Edmund McMillan, but uh, this is going to be a long fight and... It's a long fight in particular for someone with nothing to think about except for how delicious this smilly, this smilly, this chili smells in the background. Smilly is chili that you make and instead of using like water or uh, you know, an ale or a, a lager or something like that, you use a smithix. I think a smithix is an ale. No, disregard this. I'm kind of amazed by the fact that we're still alive. I really, really, as we get further and further into the game, I'm starting to realize that there is no fucking hope for me when it comes to beating Blue Baby and Isaac. How is that gonna happen? I have to stand right next to them to do damage. And they're gonna fire so many shots because they're gonna be constantly poisoned. The only thing that could have saved me there is uh, having a full suite of orbitals. And we do not have a full suite of orbitals, but we are gonna have a little Gish. And a heart, which makes me feel a little bit better. And a deal with the devil. And there would have to be a flying item in here, basically, for me to take this. There's not. There's uh, two items that are basically completely worthless for me. Not totally worthless otherwise. I mean, there are maybe some situations where you might wanna pick up Ouija board, uh, and maybe some very, very minor situations where you might want to pick up the uh, razor blade, but not right now. So there's our first check in the secret room, and obviously that's going to fail because this is a run that has no secret rooms, apparently. I don't know what I did to anger the gods of the Binding of Isaac into that, but that's okay. Yep, it's not there. Of course it's not there, because if it was there, it would have been far too easy for us to, you know, possibly make something of our lives. We have gotten two HP upgrades. Those are by far the most valuable upgrades we've gotten. Um, and you know, this is why I was like, taking holy water is not so bad. Normally it's pretty terrible because it ruins one of your familiars, right? And here it has ruined little Gish. Uh, but in many ways, holy water, uh, in all the ways on this run, holy water is actually better than uh, little Gish would actually be. And the reason for that, oh, this is a good room now. Uh, the reason for that is obviously that uh, we actually can get some damage out of holy water, whereas Gish only shoots when we shoot, or little Gish only shoots when we shoot. So, um... We might as well. I, I think we went through the right path, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, kind of a tricky room here. Took some damage and was not surprised to do so. Looks like our secret room is probably going to be down here in this uh, location. Just a little bit above us right now. Now I'm just... Oh, it's bad. It's real bad. Thank God we got that half red heart back. Now, let's poison as many of these guys as is possible. There we go. So now we should just be able to hang out uh, away from the crowd here. And uh, we'll check this room up here. Because if we are able to go to the shop, again, even if we can just buy red hearts... Are you fucking kidding me? Even if we're able to just buy red hearts and spirit hearts, that'd be great, but, uh... Again, I've missed out on the secret room. I think it must be to our left now. But my lord... Hey, we actually found one! Of course it has a fortune teller in it. That was just guaranteed. But actually, having a fortune teller is not the worst thing in the world. There's only a limited suite of, uh... Familiars... Uh, not familiar, sorry. Trinkets that would actually benefit us. But we do have Mom's Purse, so we can take two of them. Emperor card is good. Better than Wheel of Fortune. Uh... Lucky Toe is... Fine, I guess, for what we have. Uh, I'm going to blow up this. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to play this some more. Because this actually has the potential to be way more valuable than uh, the items in the shop. And we don't have the money to go to the shop anyway. So let's instead invest it in maybe getting some extra spirit hearts cheaper. Or some trinkets that give us a better chance of success. Even if we pay 10 cents and all we get is one play of the crystal ball, that's probably fine too. Emperor card, real useful. I don't know when we're going to use it. Maybe to beat Mom's heart, because I really don't see us realistically having a chance to beat Isaac and Blue Baby anyway. But I got a positive attitude. You know, I'll try it out anyway. Uh, we got nothing there, but we'll blow it up and maybe we'll get a spirit heart. We got some more money. And a bomb. And it was a pretty good payout, I guess. Uh, not from that secret room, but from the slot, or from the uh, fortune teller in specifically. Uh, Obviously, I would have preferred to just get like six cents or nine cents or and sixty-nine cents and been able to go to the the shop, but can't always get what you want, I guess. And of course, now we get the two of diamonds card. Uh, I wish I had known that that would appear. I would have not invested all my money in that fortune teller, but I guess again, you can't always get what you want. So let's just come down here and explode that guy really quickly, uh, and we'll use the two of diamonds card before we leave this floor because the 
Emperor card is so much more valuable. In fact, we're going to use the Two of Diamonds card right now. And we might get lucky and find the second secret room with this play. But I doubt it. Eight cents does not guarantee us a payout from this judgment. Not even close, but I, I'd give us maybe a 40% chance. Maybe a two in five chance of getting a payout from this judgment. Even if he just gives us red hearts, that's still fine. You know, eight cents for a red heart is not a great deal. Here are fine. Okay, eight cents for two spirit hearts and a red heart is actually okay. And the key, which is not that useful right now, but... Um, we'll take our hero font uh, card right now because we're going to be leaving with the emperor card. We might get lucky and get a little bit more money. I don't know. It's a sh well, there's a little bit more money over there with the magnet. We should be able to get it. It's a damn shame because if I had been able to know that there would be a two of diamonds card earlier, uh, I would have totally been able to get like thirty cents or something like that. But uh, unfortunately, I acted perhaps a little bit rashly. But that's okay. We still have a little bit of uh, time here. Where maybe we can get lucky, and one more play on this guy is nothing. So we leave. But we leave with uh, a little bit more hope in our hearts, I would say. Actually, you know what? I think we should go over to the shop. It might be a waste of a key. My cat's giving me like a sidelong glance right now. He's like, what the fuck is that smell, man? You're feeding me like potato chips made of dried raccoon meat, and you're cooking this chili for yourself? Yeah, I'm cooking this chili for myself. When the cat's asleep, the lion eats. It doesn't really rhyme, but... You gotta go to sleep first. Now, inside of our shop- Oh, it's beautiful! Okay, so, this is my intention, uh, or what I was hoping for at least, by fighting Greed- That was a pretty sweet aggressive dodge there too. By fighting Greed, uh, we're gonna get either a Steam Sale, it's still something, uh, or what we really want, what we really really want, I wanna- Yeah, exactly what we got here, a little bit of money. Quarter would've been better, and again, this makes me think of what might have been if we had just come this way, and then gone the other way, getting the Two of Diamonds, uh, but five more cents certainly gives me a better chance of getting a payout from Judgment. So maybe we'll get lucky here. All in all, you know, I'm I'm pleased with the way this run has gone. I didn't necessarily expect to be alive this long, but here we are, and that's okay. Uh, it's a good thing. If we beat Mom's Heart, I'll consider this run a success. Maybe not everyone will, but I will. Uh, let's just play a little bit longer. Oh, one more play was enough to get us the ladder, which is basically functionally worthless when we already have the... Uh, the magnet, but oh, you can do it! You can do it! You can't do it. Um, yeah, it's basically completely worthless now that we already have the uh, magnet, except in the case of treasure chests or if we want to use the ladder to maybe do some funky dodges. But for now, we're uh, four and a half plus one and a half in terms of our hearts, so that makes six. And we're uh, going down to the mom fight. Well, the floor, you know, preceding the mom fight and then the mom fight. And I'm excited to see how that works out for us. We're in a better position than we have been for a lot of floor entrances. But we are in Necropolis. And uh, what did I tell you? I knew that it would happen at some point. I really thought that I would be able to dodge there. Okay, this is where we need to stand. We need to stand in a, in a place like this. It works. Now, this is the most tactical I've ever had to be on a run like this. No, nope, don't stand. Don't. Oh, it works. Okay. It works. Just, oh, he is smarter than his companion. We actually made it through there somewhat easier than I did on a lot of runs where I, I was able to use my tears. So, shows what I know. That was a, a really ideal room basically for us right there, especially after that turret killed everything. Uh, I did get some decent poisonings in though. So the way that this, this room is one of the scarier ones, because even when we poison them, it's not really going to do that much damage, and then they're going to be around to do all sorts of shitty damage to us later. So, I hate that, but we did get a Spirit Heart back. Necropolis is going to be a real problem. That's okay, though. Now, we don't have the Steam Sale, but we do have 11 keys, so I'm going to the shop regardless. That's kind of a no-brainer, I think. Alright, now that these guys are poisoned, I think one of the key takeaways from this run is just have patience. Because if you poison an enemy, you should be good to go. There's a Spirit Heart, and uh, there's also a Coin Purse, and the Coin Purse really interests me. Because we haven't really gotten a lot of pills on this run. But if we did, who knows what they might contain. If they're full health, that's amazing. If they're speed upgrades, could be pretty useful. If, God forbid they're HP upgrades, that would be incredible as well. Um, this is an, an example, actually, where the ladder was pretty good for us. Lots of red hearts over there as well. I think we buy the coin purse first, honestly. And we'll see what we get. Two orange ones. These are the crux. Friends till the end. That's fine. Uh, bad gas is another one. And the white pill. Tears down. Well, at least that's meaningless. <laughs> We'll take the Emperor card with us. We paid seven cents for basically one and a half uh, friends till the ends. But that's okay, at least we know. There's some red health back there. We might want to gamble on a blood bank if we find one. In fact, we almost certainly do want... Oh, I just walked into that. Uh, do want to gamble on it. You know what might be a useful pickup on a deal with the Devil Room? 
A uh, guppy's paw, or the guppy's paw. Guppy's paw, I guess, if you just want to not be a total weirdo about how you say it. Um, and that's really useful because we'll have permanent Polaroid invincibility with it, which means we can kind of, every time we get hit, basically have the shit out of uh, black beans spammed right into your, you know, brain frames. And uh, that's going to be really useful, I think. Uh, PhD has given us a little more HP. Uh, I didn't mean to accidentally rhyme there, but so be it. Uh, probably should have waited on that one now that I think about it because we could have uh, used it as like a full health pill if we needed it later. And it's not like PhD is going to... It's another example of like doing the run in the wrong order of operations because if we'd gotten the PhD prior to the... Um, oh no, I thought I'd screwed myself there. If we'd gotten the PhD prior to going into the coin purse or getting the coin purse, that might have drastically changed what we got there. I guess technically uh, Eve's bird foot is going to be better than Samson's lock, but we're not going to have any of them for too long here. Again, just be smart. It's bullshit, by the way, that I can't... Oh, my God. Uh, that I can't go and use my ladder on this corner. I should be able to. Like, I can't press down here and use my ladder, because it just automatically magnetizes to the other one. Which is non effing sense. This room has not gone nearly as well for me as the other time I went through here. But the double poison there should be enough to get me through this if I just wait some time, I think. Way more HP than they should have, but... Okay, uh, Wrath. Wrath is good because bombs are very useful for me. He's gonna blow himself up a lot. Don't beat yourself up over it, it's okay. Now, I'm just gonna kick this over here. He's gonna die. It's not gonna be as quick and, uh, maybe as elegant as I would like, but it's gonna be done. And again, I'm gonna be real happy if I can just beat Mom's heart on this run. He should be dead. Give me Mr. Boom, which is absolute shit because we can't even use that, but... So be it, I suppose. As much as I would love to just go fight Mom right away, uh, it's definitely in our best interest to go explore and see if there's a blood bank. Because there's enough HP for me to do that, plus there's a boss trap room that could end up having a pretty major impact on things. Maybe it could have no impact either. There's many possible outcomes. Those, those are two of them. Uh, there's also a very wide spectrum where maybe it's like Squeezy, where it helps me out a little bit. Now, this should be the easiest of all the rooms. It actually does work if you just spam the... Uh, the bean over and over. We'll get our, we'll get the money before we leave. And actually, that's one of the things that I should be doing is basically just holding the button down. Holding the button down doesn't work and just cause me to take damage. But I should be tapping it rapidly. Um, well, no uh, arcade. That sucks. I should be tapping it rapidly because it allows you to do more damage. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just constantly fire like this. That might really help my offensive potential. Because I... Uh, well, we might be able to get to the boss trap room anyway up here, but I digress. Um, I've just been kind of doing them tactically, but if I really start rapid firing them off, that might really help us in the short term here. Oh, well, I can't go to the boss trap room. It's probably still worth trying to find the secret room, but only if it's not too far away, because I'm a lazy man. And again, there's like 12 different fucking locations where it could be here, which hardly seems fair to me. But anyway, it is not there. So that's like, I've found one secret room. It had a fortune teller in it. And I've used like 12 bombs to try to find more secret rooms, but so be it, I guess. Alright, mom fight with my newfound uh, tactical ability of just mashing the spacebar as much as is humanly possible. Um, I apologize, by the way, in advance for the fact that you are just going to get a continuous stream of spacebar noise. I'm trying to tap it very delicately, like I'm tapping it in a Jane Austen novel or something like that. Um, and I'll, I'll, I won't necessarily need to do this on every room, but... Certainly, uh, on a room like this, I think it's kind of useful, because I might find myself, uh, otherwise in a very rough position. And it's actually a bit of a negative to tap it as much as I'm tapping it. Holy shit, my cat looks so angry at me right now. It's like, are you serious, motherfucker? I'm trying to sleep over here, and you're making all this racket for no reason. Uh, okay, the pentagram. This would be such an interesting run if we did not have to stick with what we've got. Uh, Eve's Birdfoot is trash, I think. I don't know if Lucky Toe's any better, but at least it's not Eve's Birdfoot. So we'll just leave. Um, it's not XL. If it had been XL, I would totally... Oh, yeah, first speed upgrade. That's actually well worth the two keys, I think. Um, because we're specifically dodging into and around like a fuck ton of enemies. Um, I totally forgot what I was going to say. If it was an XL floor, I would have used the, um, the Emperor card because it would have skipped us or saved us a lot of time. And again, uh, as much as I would love to beat Isaac and Blue Baby, I don't really see it happening. If we can beat Mom's Heart, I would consider this run be a pretty substantial success given how often we found ourselves kind of like nose to the grindstone in a really scary position. In fact, as you can see, we're already in kind of a pretty shitty position right now. If I get hit one more time, uh, I'll lose. So we really need some red hearts to drop. The one time I want little Chad, he just doesn't show up. What an asshole. Uh, another key. Would gladly trade like all of my keys for one red heart right now. But unfortunately, I don't get to choose that. Would gladly trade that entire chest yield for uh, one red heart. 
This is not the room where we die. There's another free room. We unfortunately only got a single penny out of it, though. Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, let so me just continue to move onwards here. And really, did I get... I did not get... I got hit. Oh, I tried. I really tried that one. I like that run, though. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to show your support by clicking the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more. Maybe I'll do a vanilla run next just to break up the, you know, seeming variety. The monotonous variety, if you will, of challenge runs. But uh, for now, I hope you guys are enjoying the challenge runs. Uh, if you are, make sure to like and, su and subscribe. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.